All right, so I'm here at my old stomping grounds, house where I grew up. Technically my ex-stepfather's house, but I still call him my stepfather. And he called me down here because there's some problems with the tractor and apparently I'm Mr. Fix-It when it comes to uh, mechanical problems such as this. So the problem he was having is during this past snowstorm, he was trying to articulate the front plow from left to right and it wouldn't turn. Now, in order to operate the third function valve on this tractor, this third function valve, that is an option. What you need to do is you need to press this little button right here, and when you press that down, which it is pressed down right now, that's off, that's on, that will electronically turn on pressure to that third function valve, and then it's operated via these two buttons on the joystick. So let's start this up and let's see what happens. Not turning green. All right, so the problem most likely is gonna be electronic. And if you're dealing with any kind of electronic issue, this is gonna be the tool you're gonna to wanna to have, power probe. Awesome, awesome tool, can't live without it. So the first thing I did, hook that up directly to the battery. With the power probe, they include a cigarette lighter adapter or you can just clip it right on the battery. So I just popped the hood, took the grill off. Now, I popped open, or I, I kind of lifted up this plastic shroud a little bit because I'm trying to access this switch or at least figure out where that wire harness goes to. And what I did is I actually traced that wire harness. It goes down into this little pocket right here and then it comes out right here and it goes to this connector right here. Now to me, that connector does seem a bit suspicious because I know this tractor does get left outside. Maybe there's corrosion in the terminals. So the key is on right now and I know that when you have the ignition on, that light or that switch, the, the light on the switch has come on in the past. So um, in theory, it should light up right now. The switch is on. So if I start poking around uh, with these three wires that go to the switch, by the way, there are three wires that go to the switch. You should have a good ground, which I am getting a good ground. Now, one of the other two should be 12 volts and the other side should be 12 volts too, because the switch is on right now. And both of these, uh, these other two wires right here, I'm not getting any power. Interesting, so that tells me that the problem should be from this connector somewhere back in between here and the battery. So next thing I'm gonna do is check the fuse box. All right, so let's access the fuse box. If I remember correctly, it should be somewhere right in here. And the thing I love about Kubota, specifically this tractor, I'm not sure how they do on all their tractors, but this is a Kubota B26. It was purchased in like 2010, perhaps. And it's so easy to gain access to everything in the engine bay. In order to take that grill off, there's just these bolts that you can twist off by hand, and then it kind of slides backwards, up and out. And same thing for both of these side access panels. All you do is untwist this little key right here. Now the panel is loose, and all you do is just pick it up, pull it right out. Can't beat that in terms of engine access. And there's our fuse box right in there, so let's start poking around in there and see if any fuses are blown. All right, so I think I, I figured out what the problem is, and it's actually my fault, believe it or not, from my younger days. Didn't really know how to wire things up too well. But anyway, let's talk about the power probe again for a second here. One of the wonderful things about a power probe is you can actually test these fuses while they're in their fuse block. So what you want to do, you want to turn the key to the on position, turn your ignition on, because sometimes if the ignition is off, you won't have power sent to the fuses. So as long as you have your key in the on position, you should be getting power to all these fuses. So if I take the tip of the power probe and I test, or if I tap on one of the metal leads coming off one of these fuses, see I'm getting 11.8 volts. And if I go to the right side of the fuse, if I get the same thing, 11.8 volts, that's a good sign. That tells me that that fuse is making, or it's, it's a good fuse. You know, there's continuity through the whole fuse. Now, if I go down a fuse, this is labeled auxiliary. So if I tap the left side of the fuse, I'm getting 11.8 volts. And if I tap on the right side of the fuse, nothing. Now I do suspect that this fuse uh, provides power to that auxiliary valve right here. This little button right here. However, I remember back in my younger days when I took this tractor on the road and I was plowing neighbor's driveways, by the way, that's how I got started in snow plowing. 
I did hook up that rotary beacon right there, and I also hooked up this little cigarette lighter in case I wanted to plug, you know, a little 12 volt accessory in there. Now here's what's interesting. This switch right here, when I flip this switch to the on position, if I go down to this bottom blown fuse and tap my power probe on the right hand side of this fuse right here, I'm getting a ground, which that tells me that I have a dead short somewhere beyond this switch. So that doesn't get used anymore. What I think I'm gonna do is just cut the wire that feeds into this switch and then we should no longer have a dead short in the system. Put a new fuse in there and then there's a really good chance that that light will come right on and the plow will be able to articulate again. All right, so I removed all that wiring that went in between that switch and that rotary beacon there. And I actually pulled power out of here, one of these wires here, I think this red and blue wire, which that, if I remember correctly, that was probably just some accessory power wire that was just kind of sitting there. So I chose to go off that. And uh, before this job is all said and done, I gotta make sure I wrap that up so that doesn't make direct contact with the frame. But when I wired up that beacon, <laughs> I used this aluminum clad wire which typically you try to stick to, you know, copper stranded wire, try to stay away from aluminum clad. Um, and I didn't really have any loom around this anywhere, so I don't know where the dead short was. Maybe it was somewhere along this wire or whatever, but let's go test this out. I put a new fuse in there. Here's that 25 amp fuse that we tested with the power probe, and as you can see, this thing focuses. See that fuse is absolutely blown. Now, I don't have a spare 20. It technically calls for a 20. Put a 25 in there probably because same thing happened at one point, but there was a spare 10 in here and I just put it in that slot right there. So the switch is depressed on. Let's turn the key to the on position and see if we get a green light. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but that light is on. So let's start up the tractor now. Now if we raise this up, press that button to the left or right. Yep. It's working like a top now. Beautiful. Alright, tractor's all fixed up. That wasn't too hard to figure out. Now, there's also a problem with the gate here. I'm gonna try and figure out that next. It doesn't want to close. Gates look pretty cool, don't they? Stepfather made them whew, probably about 13 years ago now. You know, a lot of the stuff you see around the property here is just projects that he did and I helped out and every now and then he'd have some workers come and help out. Maybe they owed him a favor from the job or something, but yeah, it's going to be hard letting this place go. Anyhow, every time it snowed heavily, I always had some problems with these gates. What would happen is I'd try and open up the gates and then there'd be snow that kind of built up. Uh, behind the gate and it wouldn't allow them to open all the way. Now in order for these gates to work properly, let me explain the process of how these things work. 
So with these gate motors, there are two switches. There's a closed switch and then there's an open switch. So what happens when the gate is closed all the way, this switch will rub up on this little ramp right here, therefore depressing the switch, indicating to the circuit board, hey, the gate is closed, you can shut off the motor now, and vice versa with the open switch. So when this, you know, when you press the opener to open, it instructs the motor to turn counterclockwise until this switch is depressed by this little ramp right here. That is your open switch. Now what happens when snow builds up in front of the gate here, it doesn't allow the gate to close all the way. Therefore, this closed switch does not get pressed down. So the motor thinks, hmm, what's going on here? I can't push the gate out all the way. So what will happen, the motor will try a few times to try and open up the gate, maybe once or twice, and then it kind of gives up. It says, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on, but to protect the internal components as well as the motor, I'm just going to stop right there. And as you can see, press the open button. The motor is opening the gate. You see that little ramp? I'm going to ride that switch up. And it's just barely making contact, which you almost kind of want because you want this to come out as far as possible. Can't really come out much further. I don't know, that's a tough call. I do think I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit though. It's just barely making contact because again, when you get just a little bit of snow right there, that switch doesn't engage and now the gate's closing. So, you know, there's a 20 second delay which is adjustable in the circuit board right here and then this just continues to close until the close switch rides up that ramp, tells the motor to shut down. Same thing on the other side. Hear that click, and that's how that works. So again, I think I'm gonna move this ramp forward just a little bit, and then these gates should be good to go. little bit of movement in the gate that's what you want switch is depressed I'm gonna wait 20 seconds all right this is all fixed and close it back up and call it a day.